Capital, you talked about it. Creation, this is his hero. He's saying, I'm going to first pick this. I don't care what you guys do. Yeah. This is something they do over in EA as well. If it's not found a way, they are more than happy to first pick that Kestrel and just say, look, this is one of our power picks. This is something we're super comfortable playing, and we don't think that there's something you can pick that's just going to shut that down. It's going to be key from Team Solo Mid to really have a silver bullet here for their first pick. Rhyme is going to be their answer. That's actually a little interesting. It's something that can struggle into active camos from Kestrel. So I'm not sure this is what I was looking for here, but in a comprehensive composition, uh, it can certainly do quite well. Yep. Also pretty easy to land Valkyries against Kestrel. That is the one very big advantage that the Rhyme has here. One thing to also add is the Rhyme has an intense clear speed. Like he gets through the jungle so fast, he can level up so quickly. So a lot of the Rhyme pick isn't particularly just how he's going to engage with the Kestrel. It's about controlling the jungle. So Kestrel cannot just free farm and get to those item spikes so quickly. We saw TSM do this before against Echo Fox. They just kept pushing Kestrel to the turret because they had so much jungle control. And with this Kroll ban, Rhyme's not going to really have anyone to contest him. Like, there's not going to be anyone that can really go head-to-head -head with him in the jungle. So Ace is going to have to consider this. Of course, respecting that best chuck in a yeah. jewel, though, I like the fact that they've removed that off the table. The team's adapting, coming into this, studying each other through this tournament. It's been quite a magical thing to see. Yeah, even though we're, like, you know, two minutes into just the draft of this game, you can already see that these two teams heavily respect one another. And I, I think Creation basically saying, I don't want to get two shot by a jewel today. Let's take that one off the table. Lyra comes Lyra. Through. I like this a lot, actually, because if you're able to use the Arcane Passage to get Rhyme onto the Kestrel, that removes a huge amount of the potential uh, for Ace Gaming to play around. I was expecting to see a Black Feather here from Ace Gaming. It's really, really good into this Rhyme. On point, slowing Rhyme is not uh, off the cards either. That's a very important part of being able to keep your Kestrel alive. You got Lance to do the same. I think Lyra was a really great pick, though, because it gets you over that Lance, gets you over the active camo. I mean, critical Ooh, that Team Solo Mid plays Adagio. very well. Hello. <sighs> So uh, that makes things interesting. We saw a weapon of power Adagio fairly recently yes. from Team Solo Mid. Many people had question marks. They were saying, hmm, are we not sure if this pick is good? But they dominated with it, right? So this wasn't just a fringe pick for them. This is something very strategic. So very interesting here in this last matchup of the gauntlet. Pulling out the weapon power Adagio and the Lyra. I mean, TSM was saying that they had, they still had things up their sleeves. Maybe this Adagio, maybe it will go weapon power. Maybe they go double CP with this. There are a few different directions. Honestly, we've seen weapon power rhymes be a thing in the Vainglory. <laughs> I don't expect that to come out. It seems like a very fringe pick, but I wouldn't put it past Von C. Let's just I say it like that. I would not put it past Von C at all. Maybe he's playing the Lyra this game. Who knows? <laughs> we'll have to see. Well. That is going to be the draft complete, and that means we are ready to jump on into our game between Team Solo Mid and Ace Gaming. All right, we are ready to jump into match five of our gauntlet. Team Solo Mid going up against Ace Gaming. We're ready to see East Asia going up against North America. This is a matchup. This is two regions that we haven't seen contest one another for quite some time now. And there's a lot on the line as well. Honestly, the pressure for both of these teams must be pretty significant. We've seen now at this point in the last gauntlet, America take down uh, Korea, as well as seeing in the World Championship last year, of course, East Asia lock that one in. This is a very storied rivalry, and both of these teams are top in class for their respective regions. So either one actually picking up a win here would give great confidence to the region heading into later stages of this year and into Worlds. So. Lyra Adagio. It's been a while since we've seen this pairing together. And honestly, I've even forgotten to some extent how much pressure they can apply during the early game. You just can't contest it, especially considering the fact that it is a double weapon blade Adagio with Agent of Wrath buff. When he puts that on himself, the amount of damage just from the auto attacks is almost uncontestable. Plus, Ace Gaming really has to be careful about their engages because Team Solo Mid has the Lyra Imperial Sigil to heal them back after the poke that comes through. Ace Gaming really needs to make sure they poke and execute. They can't hesitate and wait around for Dajio just to get a lot of that free damage off. I'm curious to see how Creation is going to build in this game as well because the sort of conventional wisdom against a double healing composition is, okay, you need to get that Poison Shiv. Kestrel doesn't always want to do that. Sometimes you want to go heavy on the burst with a Sar Blade, two Tyrant Monocles, maybe a breaking point build uh, can be an option as well. But 
are they going to try and win an extended fight with a with a poison chip, or are they going to tr try and delete one of the members of Team Solomon so quickly that they don't need that model? Wins? I have to say, with Best Chuck playing this Adagio, especially as a weapon power, I'm kind of tentative about calling this a double heal composition because. It, oh, Scar Shield in a huge amount of trouble Ooh, right here. Vonsi boy. looking to start things off strong right now. That's a good Githion wall to keep Scar Shield alive. Boots gets him on out to safety, and now Tassa will be the target, but looks like he should be able to get away with this one. Best Chuck will land one auto. It's not quite enough to finish a kill. Great use of juggling the healing flasks there to make sure they get out, but boot actives have been used. Vonsi going in for the invade here, knowing that Tassa is low on HP, no boot, no healing flask available. Creation is coming through though, they're thinking about collapsing Ace Gaming here. Team Solomid in a dicey spot, Vonsi very low on health, he is going to go down, but not before Best Chuck picks up first blood for Team Solo Mid. Creation now has a long way back to his turret. If a slow comes through from Lyra here, maybe something happens, but it doesn't look like Team Solomid can get close enough. Yeah, very low HP and energy right here for Creation, but it's just going to be yet another train stolen away by Team Solo Mid. Honestly, Team Solo Mid across the course of today, just so much control of their opponent's jungles. And even against a team that we know so well for macro play like Ace Gaming, they're still able to get these advantages. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the fact that we just see Team Solo Mid trying to optimize every moment that they can. But Ace Gaming responding to that invade really well. We had some criticisms from teams earlier of just letting TSM walk into their jungle without really dropping and respecting the invade potential. But good job by Creation there, dropping down, pushing them out. Of course, Best Chuck did sneak the auto in, got the first blood kill there. I'm sure he's pretty happy about that as it looks like he's working towards a Sorrow Blade here, really amplifying that early game damage. Von C's got his one death. Is he going to get any more munch? We were talking early on about the last couple of games. Von C hasn't really been dying too much, but always early in the game, it makes that jungle invade and goes down at least once. I think Ace Gaming, if anyone can do it, can certainly take him down a couple more times. Team Solo Mid, they're applying good pressure here, though. And I think that's definitely a critical piece when you're going up against this Kestrel who can get really out of control as weapon power later in the game. Especially, especially with a player like Creation at the helm, right? We know that... I think the key thing that I want you guys at home to be watching out for during this game is when we get to those later stage team fights, watch the positioning from Creation. Watch how he uses his active camo to dance around the fights and try Whoa. and find great situations. Another situation landing right here is Scar Shield going to be in a bit of a 1v3. Yeah, he's in a dicey position here with the chase coming in from Team Solo mid. They do walk into the choke point, though, and a lot of damage comes out from the Kestrel. Good Bright Bulwark stops a full re-engage from Ace Gaming, though. This is another thing that Lyra really shuts down as Lance. Both the Ultimate and the Impale are dashes. Makes it really difficult for him to get in position for these fights. Yeah, the Bulwark's also going to stop Tasa from being able to use from Faint of Heart. He's not going to be able to use Rose Offensive either, so there's going to be a very specific period of time. Ace is going to have to really balance the use of their abilities and getting in and getting out. That being said, one of the positive things about having this Lance is he does typically handle Rhyme fairly well. He's always able just to knock Rhyme back. Rhyme doesn't have any gap closers, only his boot actives. So Scar Shield will be a pivotal component of protecting creation in these team fights, especially if he optimizes and goes for that Echo, double Githian wall pushbacks will make Von C's life a little harder. But uh, creation, oh, Whoa. dodges Whoa. that. Well, Vonsi's actually. rooted in tower range as well. One more shot. Ooh, could have been absolutely huge there, but doesn't quite land onto him. Vonsi gonna get away with his life. And I mean, we just saw an example of the sustain that this composition offers. Yeah, Vonsi's already back to just over 50% health after being chunked out very, very hard. Uh, you can see Team Solo Mid really leveraging that part of their composition here. Ace Gaming are doing a good job of pressuring in the lane, though. I like this a lot. They're trying to use some early siege to maybe get an objective. It's quite hard for Flash X and Adagio to clear waves early on here. Yeah, they don't really have any significant area of effect damage, whereas the on point and Glimmer do splash and splice through those minions and lanes. So. Ace Gaming, once again, is putting on that pressure when they can. They know this is the important part of the match where they do have that poke advantage. Of course, though, you know, just escaping that Valkyrie is so critical for Ace Gaming, right? Like, we need to really hammer that down because if that lands, if that stuns up Kestrel and she dies, she would fall behind quite significantly in farm. Best Chuck already a few minions ahead, so a nice use of that active camo. 
You go invisible, but you don't always have to keep going in the same direction. Sometimes you do a little juke juke there with your new shoes and get out of damn danger. Certainly is the case. And now Tass are going to be stepping on into the lane just to make sure that those minions don't go to waste his creation Von and head back to base. Sorrow Blades now finished on both carries right here and Shattered Glasses on both junglers. So a significant power spike for both teams. But the key thing to be watching out for is how much burst damage can come out from either of these squads. If anyone's caught out of position, if some CC lands on either side, that can almost instantly turn into a kill. Yeah, I mean, this is going to essentially be a matchup of hyper carries Ooh. with tons of offensive items. Flash, Flash X. X caught out here. This could be bad news. Tassa is on the hunt. He's Thankfully, tanky. though, Flash X is, is not against a weapon, Black Feather. That probably would have been a much easier chase from Tassa and Soul Shield. Well, one thing to note, too, is Flash X does have a Crucible before Fountain. So he's a bit tankier than normal at this point in the game, and those Imperial Sigils really giving him a lot more healing because of that as well. So you don't always have to go Fountain first. It is a great team-wide utility item. But if your goal, of course, is to apply lots of uh, sustain over time, that Crucible first item is there. He's got Fountain now, though. Doesn't matter. He's got both. He can do whatever he wants. Scar Shield is on the flank here. If he wants to try and set up a play, there might be a window. They're on to Von C here. But once again, this sustain absolutely crucial in these fights. Best Truck manages oh. to dodge the Impale right here. Fountain comes out from Scar Shield. Best Truck on the front line, dishing out the damage onto Tassa. They're having to back away, but the gold mine is helping on out here, getting some damage onto Flash X. Nobody goes down. Everything used from both teams, and it's going to be a stalemate. What a beautiful disengage there from Ace. Like, in a tough spot, they kind of wanted to fight, but then once things turned against them, they were able to split up and go different ways. It's not always about winning a team fight. Sometimes if things go south, the skill to <laughs> remove yourself from yep. the team fight without dying is just as impressive. Great work there by Ace Gaming. We talked about it though, right, Munch? It's one of those things where if they can't get the kills, Lyra will win out in the sustain. So they either have to nail at the execution in the moment or they're going to have to back up. Yeah, and critically as well, Team Solomon did not pick up the gold mine there. So really, you know, Ace did not lose out on anything. They were able to rotate back, pick up farm, heal up, buy items, all the things that you want to do in order to keep picking. Uh, your, your fights carefully as Ace Gaming. Team Solo mid, it's it's hard for them to get into position mm -hmm. against this Kestrel. It's something we were talking about in the draft. You're seeing it in practice here. Once they do maybe get War Treads on Flash X, something to give them that little extra oomph, I do think, though, that Kestrel is going to have a, a kind of a hard time. Yeah, for sure. And I want to uh, once again bring up this conversation of the macro play out of these two teams. Even, like, Ace Gaming is a team and a, from a region that we always, always talk about their macro play, how good they are at controlling the map and making sure to get at small advantages. Right now, even though kills are even and there's no significant objectives going either way, it's Team Solo mid with an actual gold lead for themselves. Well, technically, this is a correction. TSM actually did secure the gold mine earlier. We just ah. barely caught it off screen. You can actually see it's only halfway full in about 10 minutes. So they were able to get that gold. But whoa, whoa. those glimmer shots into that turret, though. Doing so much work there. Best Chuck and A does want to set something up, though, because if Team Solomid can't pick a fight soon, inevitably Ace Gaming will be able to poke down the turret. You can see already Team Solomid beginning to move up a little bit. Vonsi does have some good damage here. Flask forced from creation. Team Solomid, if they don't send everyone up to lane right now, if they don't try and pressure Ace, they will lose the turret. Yeah, they definitely will, and we see the poke advantage. I love the dynamic, though, of this. We have essentially the kind of barrier and healing composition from TSM that has sustain, but we have the high damage, long distance poke composition coming from Ace. <laughs> Each have their kind of clear objectives. Bonsi continues to put that pressure. He gets both of those front minions there with the Winter Spire. So. I love I love how cheeky Scar Shield was there. He knows that there are three players there, but he knows he's also a Lance, right? So goes for a Githion wall just so that the Scout Trap gets damage onto Flash X. It's such a, it's not even important in the grand scheme of the game. It's just funny to see that level of confidence coming out from these players, knowing that they can really strut their stuff on the stage. Well, you're not a true Lance captain unless you're willing to go into the 1v3. This is going to be the yeah. turret going down. Team Solomid wants to make something happen <laughs> off the back, though. Here comes the portal. Yeah, here we go. Portal on in. But look at this CC coming on through. There's oh! a triple root coming out from Scar Shield. Can they finish a kill, though? That's what's important right here. Tassa trying to get onto this back line. One shot, one kill onto Flash X. And we'll have to back away from this one. Tassa pretty far up on Ooh, his own right it. here. Will go down, overextended on that one. Creation could not follow up with the damage. There's a little bit more sustain coming out from Flash X as Von C trying to get forward. It's very difficult to aggress onto this Kestrel. The damage Ooh. he can do, Ooh. one more glimmer shot. 
could have been enough there. Flash X, though, look at him healing on up with the Adagio and the Lyra. It's so difficult to get damage to stick. Yeah, that was actually very bold from Tasso, though. Oh, <laughs> best Chuck, man. That was incredibly close. Very bold from Tasso to go that aggressive into a rhyme. He let himself be rooted, and as soon as that happens, mm. there is definitely the damage from Team Solo Mid to find a kill. In fact, as, you know, overall, their team has a lot of damage right now. The problem is they're not able to get onto the targets that they need to uh, unless Ace Gaming kind of lets that happen. It's really, really tough. Yeah, Tasso did have a charge on his Rose offensive, so he might have just been holding it a little too long at the... Uh, Root yeah. there coming out of Von C, just locking him down. But Creation not backing down, even in the 1v2, saying, I have Glimmer shots, you've got auto attacks, I will trade you that damage any day of the week. Absolutely. So far today, we've talked a lot about Von C and his pressure in the jungle. In the lane, everything's just about even between our carries. But when you look towards the jungle, heavy CS deficit. Von C <laughs> looking for the Valkyrie over the wall there, perhaps. Although, not really an easy way to uh, catch up if you do land it. Ace Gaming really having great movement around the map here, though, Jackson. One of the things that you can do with Lance, and we see this often coming out of East Asia, is Lance just always sits on the front line. He essentially is a mobile scout trap to the extent that he's typically able to get out of most situations. So it allows Ace Gaming to rotate their team around in very effective ways. Oh, man, Team Solomid, they want to pick up their first turret here. They should be able to do it, but have they put themselves too far out of blocks. position? Von C was actually thinking about going on to the back line, so it does not look like it. Ace Gaming, are they going to be able to pick up a kill here? Tasa on the front line is thinking about going in. That's going to be a two-man route. Great job by Starshield to land it. The slows keep on coming in from beyond points as well. But that's going to be the counter-engage creation. Engage. He needs to land the damage. Best Chuck's already gone down. That's bad news for Team Solo mid. Von C, pretty healthy, has the flask available, but it's just him. One versus three. There's no way he's going to be able to get out of there. Creation does nearly go down, but... Without him falling, Team Solo Mid has no way to stop Ace Gaming from taking control of the map right now. Well, that team fight was actually very well done from Ace. We talked a little bit about this before. It's one of these things where, yes, you can portal in with Lyra, but your portals actually have to be meaningful and strategically done. If you portal in and you don't do it in the right position, you're actually going to get picked off in a really bad way. And we see it here during this replay. When this happens, when Flash X chooses to go in, they're actually still next to a turret. So the Githian wall actually pushes them out of position. And Best Chuck's just exposed to the Glimmer shots and the damage coming out of this Kestrel, he doesn't have any armor, so it's just not a position he wants to be in. Look at this sidestep right at the end from Creation. Final one. Oh, it was just after the replay, actually. <laughs> there was a final Winter Spire that came out, and he just about narrowly avoids it. It could have been a traded kill coming out from Von Steed, though. Yeah, and it was unfortunate for Best Chuck during that fight, too. He was honestly bouncing around the fight like a ping-pong mm -hmm. ball. Very hard for him to get in a position to do the damage he needed to. Ace Gaming are playing very, very nicely right now. Team Selimid is looking for that flank initiation. Potentially, there's another Arcane Passage. They want to go in for this one. This time, Creation going to be going down very quickly. Best Chuck with the crits is doing some serious work. Scar Shield, he's so Sigils low. Up. Sigils uh, up, but that's the replay oh, block. Scar Shield gets on out of there. Von C, I'm sure he'd love to get on top of Tasa here. Just can't do it, though. Tasa uh -huh. actually putting some serious pressure on all those stacks nice up. Nice bulwark. If the bulwark was not there, the leap forward might have been able to go for the execute kill. Kraken has just spawned a great time to get a pick for Team Solo mid. Can they find this massive objective off the back of it, though? Scar Shield and Tasa are here to contest. This is stealable. On point they does a lot of damage. This could be huge right now. It's going to be going down. It's going oh, to be Tasa that oh, gets yeah. the steal. That is absolutely massive. There's a triple root as well. Tasa gets himself a kill. Von C is in trouble. This is going to be a two versus three oh, ace. Man. They get the Kraken as well. Ace Gaming have just flipped everything onto its head. This is an absolute disaster for Team Solomon. Not only does Ace Gaming steal the Kraken, but one shot, one kill comes through and picks off Best Chuck in A just to add misery already to the defeat on that objective. They get ace, Kraken push through turret number one. They are now on the choke point turret. This is terrible for TSM. Yeah, Kraken's still very healthy pushing on towards these Vein Crystal turrets as well. 
Yeah, this is going to be a really tough spot. Also, <laughs> great damage on the best Chuck straight away. He's forced back, can't start clearing the crack, and another turret likely to go down here. Could this be the game? Ace Gaming are thinking about going for Broke get here, route. but that is going to be a kill on Tassa. Team Solomit, they're on the hunt. Creation out of energy here, but no one's backing up Flash X. They've nope. got to deal with the Kraken in the base. Bean Crystal not going to be going down. Ace Gaming are going to have to come back later and try and tie this one up. What a swing, though, for Ace Gaming. The amount of gold and just map control that they gained in the last couple of minutes is unbelievable. I mean, this is actually the second time this gauntlet where TSM has lost the 50-50 trade on Kraken. If you're going to do this, you have to execute it, and you cannot get aced if the 50-50 trade means that you your entire team goes down and yep. you get pushed all the way to your vein crystal. It is not worth it. So some shot calling mistakes out of TSM there. You definitely, the confidence to try to pull it off was there. But once again, just a little bit of a missed time. They could have, Valkyrie was coming up. We saw that Von C wanted to be able to use it to secure the Kraken there. But because they had done so much damage to it already, Valkyrie wasn't able to land in time. And therefore, Blackfeather was able to pick it up. I think Team Solomit are really embracing being in Vegas here, going for the 50-50 on that Kraken. A little too bold for my liking, but Ace Gaming haven't done it yet. There is still a chance Team Solomid come back, but they cannot make any mistakes because there is a bare vein crystal on their side of the map, and Ace Gaming are hungry to take down Team Solomid here. I mean, the good news for TSM is that they do not have a significant gold disadvantage. Even after all of those turrets being pushed down, the gold is still fairly even. Only 1.4 thousand behind 18 minutes. Doesn't mean too much. But Von C opting for more defense. Here we they go. go in. Here we go, team fight underway. Von C on the front line already incredibly low Best in this one. But Creation's oh, caught out! Him. That is huge for Team Solo mid. Tassa now trying to kite back away from this one. Skarshield running on into the jungle. They have to decide which target they want to chase on this one. They're not going to be able to get an ace regardless. And Tassa keeping them at arm's length, doing a great job of kiting away here. But how long can he actually survive this one? Skarshield coming no back way. in. Are they looking for a two versus three? This would be unreal if this was pulled off by Ace Gaming. Best truck is getting a little bit too too close for comfort, but they finish off the kill in the end. It's Von C that grabs him. And now Scarshield has maybe put himself in a dangerous situation. Eight seconds until creation's up. Scarshield needs to survive. He can't afford to let an ace go across. Three seconds left on the death timer. One second, he's denied the ace. And now he's just playing for extra time. Yeah, that was so close to being an ace, though. So Scar Shield eventually going down. Had that ace happened, huge opportunity for Team Solo Mid to push in. They would have healed up. They would have had an ace buff on the minions. Even still, though, they are thinking about this Kraken. Second time might be the charm here for Team Solo Mid as they look towards that massive objective. Honestly, Ace Gaming kind of baited themselves in there with Tasa hitting so many on points. He was like, maybe we can do this. <laughs> Did not quite pan out though. Kraken unleashed for Team Solo mid. How much can they take from this one push? Impressive footwork though by Best Chuck in A. Getting around to the back line, staying on Kestrel during the entire fight, weaving, stutter stepping, getting every auto attack in. It is so, so important that he is able to get on top of Kestrel. If they do not kill her quick enough, the damage coming out of her, especially with this bone saw, it's just ripping through the arm armor on the front line of Team Solo mid here. But with a healthy Kraken and this push, we're looking at at least two turrets going to TSM. They're going to probably want more. We'll have to see if they're able to get it. Creation will do a good job of melting through the Kraken health bar, though. Ke Weapon Power Kestrel, so good at killing Kraken. That's going to be half health already. They may be able to take this choke point turret. Ooh, this Tassa. is going to be an incredibly important Ooh. point in the game. Tassa has to back away from this one. They're actually going to try and jump in there with the Arcane Passage, but immediately Flash X goes back the other way. Tassa is not running towards the turret base. TSM die. were not able to hunt him down. They're going for the turret. That's the root landing. Oh. Flash X, very low health here, but wow. some good healing coming across. Tassa did not full heal at the base, so he's chasing in at half here. Bit risky. Team Solo mid, though, have those Lyra Imperial Sigils on the other oh side goodness. of the map. They are able to sustain through a lot of this damage. Tassa. <laughs> he oh. does not want to give up, does he? He keeps on chasing that one down. They don't get a kill in the end. But we saw, look at the effective health of Flash X in that fight. The amount of healing and shielding that kept him alive was unbelievable. I mean, he had to use everything, but so critical to stay alive. We essentially have an identical gold game almost here, guys. This is what you expect when you have some of the best of NA versus the best of EA coming together here in the final round of the gauntlet. By far the closest game. And we're about to have another team fight here in a minute, it looks like. But the thing is, is TSM, they have to 
be able to continue to get on this Kestrel in the back line, one of the things Ace Gaming needs to do, eyes on Scar Shield, how can he continue to protect her? Yeah. The portal, such an enabling transport mechanism for Best Chuck to get to the other side. Disaster, though. If Creation can drop an active camo on that portal engage, that could be all that Ace needs to clean up Adagio really quick. Yeah, Crucible and the, and the individual reflex blocks from Team Solo made absolutely massive in this game. We are not seeing the Echo out of Scar Shield, so there's only that one Githian wall coming through. Team Solo mid only really has to block that initial brunt of crowd control and actually maybe go in during that cooldown, perhaps. Well, that's going to be the engage from Flash X once again, portaling on in. Scar Shield doing Flash a good on. job of peeling. Oh, Flash X actually soaking a lot of damage here, but Creation does survive. Tassa barely getting away on a breath of health. Has to use that Rose Offensive just to pull himself to safety. No charges of that remaining, but he has got out with his life. Only that could not have been closer to the end of the game right there for Team Solo Mid. This is getting incredibly close. Team Solo Mid are starting to find the, the special sauce I guess they need to win these fights consistently. They're playing the initiations very, very well. I'd almost like to see Vonsi pick up a second Crucible for the team. If you can get past that initial crowd control from Ace Gaming, they don't seem to have a lot left in the tank. Yeah, they definitely don't, but we do see Scar Shield getting the heavy prism. This is going to increase the amount of time in which you were crowd controlled when he does impel or Githian you specifically. So if he does get off a successful portion of crowd control, Ace Gaming could essentially just delete someone from Team Solo mid. So you, ideally you want to see TSM not fighting in the jungle and it's a very dangerous place to pick a fight with active camos and Githian wall. So that's probably why we see them positioning in the lane right now, pushing the wave, really forcing the decision making onto Ace. Since Kraken is up, TSM wants to take control of this side of the map. 32 second cooldown there from Creation with that one shot, one kill did absolutely nothing to Flash X, basically. It's getting to the point where they're just so tanky that it's hard for Ace Gaming to do the damage they need to. You see both teams brawling a little bit here. Team Solo Mid wants to find that window. Here, here it's going to go. Flash engaging once again. Von C getting onto creation in this back line. This is dangerous for Ace Gaming. He's going to go oh, down, down on this one. Team Solo Mid getting an advantage, trying to turn it into more. Now looking towards Scar Shield. They should be able to chase him down eventually. But Lance, so hard to actually catch up to with his roll, with his impale. Best Chuck just waiting for him to make that move, though. Will be able to stick the onto wall. the target. Scar Shield he doesn't tried. quite get the roll. Good effort from the guy, but not an ace but still a huge opportunity for TSM. It might be oh. an ace. Tassa ooh, just he, gets away with that he one. He was like almost 100% certain that TSM were just going to go for Kraken there. So he was like, all right, I got to move in. Wait, they're here. Oh, no. Now Team Solo mid, they're actually pushing without Kraken. This is a bold this play. Is very They've bold. got two turrets left. I don't think they can end the game here, but they're, they're certainly gonna going to try. But he's so low, he's got to get out. He's, he's actually turret. still taking turret aggro. Oh, they got the ace. That is the kill. Ace buff minions, ace healing. That is huge for Team Solo mid. They're going to clean the game up and run the gauntlet flawlessly, moving on to the championship. What an absolutely incredible.